So just want to pull out a few things from the examples or the questions I just assigned, and then we'll move on to the next little mini concept. I promise it won't be like a big one. Hopefully you found that was not long. Um, you just have to apply it and get used to that. Okay, and it'll be the same with this. So I asked you to do one, two, and nine, and there were some good questions that came out of each. I hope you realize um, this really, and we said this right in the first lesson, it brings together a lot of the mathematics we've learned over the last like term and a half. And so for example, this particular one here, the concept we wanted you to get in this question was, where, where are the boundaries of this integral, right? I, from memory, this particular probability density function, it's defined from x equals 50 and then onwards. Can you just double check that? Question two, see the domain there, right? So it's like, oh, on my, um, whatever my graph looks like, right? It starts at 50, so whatever happens before 50, I don't really care about that. And then they ask for the probability less than 60. Right? So this is the section, or this is the domain that I'm interested in. So that's where my lower and upper boundaries come from, 50 to 60. But in a sense, even though that's kind of the main thing the question's about, once you do that, that's just where your problems begin. Because this is not like an easy integral by any stretch. You have to think back a lot to how do you like form this into something that's easy to work with. Um, there's a fraction here which might make you think, oh, is this one of those log integral? Like it's going to end up with a log? But it's not, because if you made this denominator, f of x, the numerator, it, it doesn't look anything like f dash x, right? Um, what would it be on the top if you wanted this to be f of x? This would have to be something like, a, like an x cubed of some kind, right? Because it should only be one um, step down from the index, right? So you're like, it's not. That's no good, OK? So what we have to do instead is take that one big fraction, break it into two pieces, which you can then, you have to use your index laws. Again, lots of prior knowledge that you need to call on. And then from there, you actually can safely integrate. You still end up with some gross stuff here. But once you've put this into a form like, I would probably on the next line, I would write that as minus 1 over 2x squared. Can you see what I did there? The negative on the bottom from this negative 2 comes up the top. That's where we usually write them. And that x to the power of negative 2 really means you're dividing by x squared, not multiplying. Um, this here, it's like it's still gross, right? You've got 50 over 3. And you can see I've cancelled that double negative, right? This thing is what we're going to put our um, 50 and our 60 into. And your calculator is going to do that work, OK? But you can see the integration, right? It's, it's still part of the challenge of this. Um, this is question nine, the last one I'll ask you to do in that little set here. And um, you're like, oh, trig functions. It's been a while since we dealt with these, right? So you want to think about the fact that if you were to differentiate from something and land here, because that's the opposite of what we're doing here, um, what function do we start with that differentiates into sine? Think carefully. Hmm. What do I differentiate? to land on here. It's going to be sine x, right? That differentiates into, yeah, no, it's, so, it's so tricky, right? Because you have minus signs flying around. Sine just goes into cos when you're differentiating, right? When you differentiate again, that goes into minus sine, right? So you're like, oh, I don't have a minus sine here, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to reshape this so that it'll integrate into something that I know how to deal with. So for example, I'm going to pop a minus sign right at the front. Uh, my boundaries are still the same. Um, that minus sign out the front, I sort of compensate for it with another minus sign on the inside. Um, so this is looking a little better for me. I know that I can differentiate back up into cos x, but I'm still out of the woods yet, right? This comes from, sorry, there's a dx hanging out on the end there. This comes from a use of chain rule, right? See that pi x on 6 inside the brackets, right? So it's really um, pi on 6 times x. Pi on 6 is just a constant, yeah? Could have been a 2 or a 3 or a minus 1, OK? So therefore, this guy here would have come out the front when I did chain rule. So I, I want a pi on 6 to be there. It's not a pi on 6. So how do I turn this into a pi on 6? What can I factorize out to make that a pi on 6? A 2, right? But just be careful with your 2, because it's a 2 that's on the denominator. Do you, do you see that? The denominator is bigger than I want it to be. So I'm going to put a minus a half out the front. That leaves me with a minus pi on 6 on the inside. And you're like, aha, this thing I can deal with. If you go to your reference sheet, this is one of the results. It's actually, it's not word for word, but that's what it looks like, right? You've got your f of x here, 
and there's your f dash. Okay, so now I'm good to go. I can now just say that's going to be cos of pi on 6x and you'll take your numbers and evaluate. Okay, so I'll leave those there for a minute because I know um, this is the stumbling block. Like This is the knowledge that it's like I'm trying to grab for this and it's just been weeks and months since I've um, rehearsed it. So I'll leave that there for you guys to have a look at.